Hi. In this video, I explain how to use Apache Derby, which is also known as Java DB. What is so special about Apache Derby? It is a small database engine that comes along with JDK. So you don't have to install anything. If you are using Oracle or MySQL or any other mainstream database, you have to install it. There are some steps related to administration. But if you want to use a small database engine for your JDBC and other examples, this is the best database engine. So let us see how you can get started with this. This is my blog about how to use Apache Derby using JDBC. So the first thing you need to do is just install your JDK, of course, and I'm going to use Eclipse. And I have a simple Java project from where I want to access uh, Derby database. But all that you need to do is just download the JDBC driver for Derby because I'm going to use what is called as embedded driver. Embedded driver is accessing a database which is running inside JVM. So you don't have to even start the database separately. It's all part of your JVM. It runs inside your JVM along with your Java application. The only downside with that is you can have only one connection at a time. That should not be a problem when you're just learning what is what from JDBC. But if you want to access a mainstream database system like Oracle, well, the JDBC by and large remains the same. You just need to change a few things to connect to any other database like Oracle, MySQL or something else. So let us see how to get Derby. So just click on this URL. It will take you to the home page of Apache Derby and you get details. And what impresses me the most is this, the small footprint. It takes very little space and it is just about 3.5 MB. That's all. And it's a database engine with embedded JDBC driver. Now go to download tab. And there you have to download 10.15.2.0. And this is for Java 9 and higher. In case if you are using some older versions of Java, then you check out one of these options. So I go with this. I just click on that. And then it gives me the list of options. And I want to go with this, the zip version. So I download and I'm going to put it in a Java folder. So I have a software folder. So that's where I'm going to copy this. That's it. It's downloaded and this is just about 20.7 MB. And once it is done, I go to that folder. And here is my Derby here. So this is the zip file and unzip it using whatever software you have. I'm using WinRAR extract and it is going to be extracted into this folder. Actually, it will create one more folder there so you can as well extract it directly into this or anything you like. Say OK, it's extracted. And it is going to provide you not just the JDBC driver, a few other things as well. So here we are. We got a Derby 10.15. Now, if you go inside that, you find lib, and this is your JDBC driver. So all that you need to have is this for now. So let's go use it. So this is my Derby demo project. And there I have a program which is going to connect it to this. And in this case, I need to add Derby JDBC driver to my project. So let's select this project, right click, build path. There you need to go to configure build path because it should be made available to our project. So it has to be in the class path related to this particular project. So configure build path and there you have to go to libraries. This is where you should go and select class path. 
and then add external jars click here you're going to select it and now what you need to do is you need to go to the directory where we installed it so i go there and here it is get into lib and select derby dot jar that's it this is the jar file that i'm interested in apply and close now you got the jar file and the next step is to establish a connection so let us see how you do that and this is uh, how we connect it to derby and you can specify the location where you want to have the database so i just want to have this in a folder like a java in d drive and then i want to have this i just want to go for something like this i say something like classroom and then java and then this is the folder where it will create the database so this is the database url jdbc colon derby then give the path make sure you give double backslash in java because single backslash is treated as escape sequence and create is equal to true is saying we want to create a database if it is not already present and that is needed for now because i don't have this database so let's go and simply run this program and once you run it is saying it is trying to create a database and once the database is created it says connected to derby database and if you go and check in e drive then classroom and then java you can see that folder there you are test db is the folder this is your database and it is created right now and click on this get into it and you see some files related to the database well this is none of our business it is uh, the database and it is taken care by derby database engine now how do i create a database schema objects how do i create tables and other things you can write program to do that or you can as well use some tools in fact you can use a tool called data source explorer in eclipse to do that or you can use some third party tools which allow you to connect it to any database and provide some nice graphical interface but in this video i would like to use a few programs so i use a program like this and this is to create a table in app schema of derby so let me create a, a new class i call it as a create table and let's put it here so this is my program this is going to create books table in app schema because the database has different schemas and we need to use app schema and this is where i have my database we need to give the same path everywhere so i'm saying classroom then java and then we are talking about test db and this time i'm not saying create true in fact create true is not a bad option even here because it doesn't create if database is already present okay so create a statement and then we want to create a table called books with id which is primary key and generated always as identity is used so that the id is automatically generated i don't have to create that id and title and price are the other two columns that's it and i execute that and i close the connection well if you want you can be more systematic by closing the statement as well so that's it we can go ahead and run this and you should see a table created so it is going to execute this command terminated means no errors everything is fine and now we can go ahead and insert a row into this and i create one more program let's just uh, copy and paste so i say add book and you can add as many as you like and here is uh, the code related to adding a book so i should go to this add book 
and this is where I have to change it. So this is about uh, how we do it. We are using prepared statement and this is the command and we want to insert a row into books table with the title and price and those two are parameters and I'm replacing the first one with this. This is the title. The second one is the price and then I say execute update and then I can close both of them. Well, I'm not bothered much about any exception handling. So I'm saying throws exception here. So this is how I insert a row. Let's go ahead and run. It's going to create a row in books table. If you run it multiple times, you will get different book IDs. So if you want, you can try this. Let us say spring boot in action and I'm giving some 550. And if I go run again, I'm inserting one more row. So two rows are inserted into books table. Now my last program is going to be slightly different. So again, copy and paste. This is the fastest way to replicate. So I say list books and here let's go to list books and there we need to use cached row set. So this is the code and I'm going to replace all this with this. And this is where I change again my connection string. So classroom and Java and then this. So select start from app books and we need to import whatever interfaces and classes we are using and row set factory is what we need. And from that we are going to create cached row set. And this is not where I explain what cached row set is, etc. Because this is primarily to show you how to use Derby, not exactly how to use JDBC. So this is uh, the connection string or URL and this is the query and we want to display title and if you want, you can even display price. But if you get this uh, up and running, it means all is well. So let's go run this and you should see two titles listed and this is what you get. So here we are. The first title is that second one is Spring Boot in action. That's it. This is how you connect to a database. So it is there and from now onwards you can use the test DB. You don't have to create the database. But as I told you, you can have only one connection to it, not multiple connections. But even one connection is good enough when you're learning how to deal with something like JDBC. Now, I find it uh, very appealing because I don't have to deal with any large database systems like Oracle or MySQL or SQL Server. Instead, I can use a database engine and get the job done. So. That's about how we use uh, Derby. For more information about it, uh, please go to the official homepage and there you get more information about Derby, what it is, and also you get a lot of documentation and you have information about this. So 10.15 manuals, you have a lot more details there. So all the very best, keep coding and keep growing.